Hello my friends and welcome to episode 8, the deployment phase for Madeira, also known as the let's look over all the stuff we stole phase. <laughs> oh man. Alright, so before we get started, let's um have a look over our boys and see if we want to make replacements, which we probably do. Okay, so... 33 experience for... <clears throat> 21 to save 33 experience. Me. I'd lose 180 there, that's pretty severe. So we'll definitely elite that one. And I'd lose 278 there, so that's pretty severe as well. This would be the loss of only 33 experience, so I'm tempted to just standard reinforce that one. Sadly, because it's a uh, because it's a three strength unit, um, I cannot um, brain melting here. Uh, I, I cannot give it free over strength. All right, this unit actually did not take any damage and gained loads of exp, so that's pretty cool. This one took some damage. It's pretty cheap to uh, only only uh, thirteen. Prestige to save that. Save that experience, so let's do that. I would lose 52 here for 30 EXP. Uh, for 30 Prestige. Anti tank guns are actually quite hard to level, so I am going to pay for that. Uh, interestingly, we do have a uh, superior anti-tank gun that we captured, but we don't actually have enough of it to deploy it. But it's something to keep in mind. If we can get our hands on some more 45 mil, uh, it would be a pretty decent upgrade. Well, I say pretty decent, it's only two extra attack, but you know, it's an upgrade and it wouldn't cost us anything really, so something to keep in mind. Right. Back to the artillery. This is uh, one of these areas where you can save yourself a lot of money. Uh, I would lose well over a hundred there. Only 84 there, but this hasn't got much experience to start with. I would just be tempted to elite replace these for now. Whoa, 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 why did that? That just did standard replacements instead of elite replacements. The shortcut did not work. Well, that sucks. Uh, let's just reload the game. <laughs> My shortcut key did not work there. That's what you get for using shortcuts. Anyway, now that I've done the actions, I can repeat them pretty quickly, so. All right, let's get back to work. Right, so. It was, uh, this one here, I think, offered very little. Yeah, so standard replacements for you, elite for you, and you, and you, and all of you. Okay, good. All right, moving on. 80 experience, that's basically nothing. And uh, replacements for an anti-aircraft gun are actually very expensive, so I am just going to standard that one.
132, once again, very limited experience here. And very expensive replacements. It is pretty difficult to level up anti-aircraft guns though, that's the only thing. But, it is also, you know, you are throwing, uh, throwing EXP, uh, throwing prestige away at times. 72 for 140 prestige. Do you know, I can afford to do elite replacements for now, so... Let's try and build this one up. I'm not so concerned about the, uh, the smaller gun. Alright, aircraft are uh, just so incredibly inexpensive at this phase of the game that there's really no harm in doing elite replacements for all of them. Okay, and we're done. Isn't it interesting that the scout cars are actually the ones that are hoarding EXP right now? It's kind of funny to think about. Right. Man, these guys actually got a good 100 EXP each from me constantly bombing everything. Okay, all right. Now it is time to look at our gear. What have we acquired? Oh wow. Our prototype is uh is a junker. The junker that could be a massive improvement over the aircraft I have access to right now. And I mean that in a big way. Oh, that's actually really very cool. And we also have... I got another 17 anti-aircraft guns, so that's great. That really covers things for me. There's also some captured Spanish 20 mil that may or may not be useful to me. But I do have enough of it. And we acquired some more uh, BT-5s. Enough to actually deploy them now. And for that to not be an issue. Okay, well we definitely want to deploy... Uh, the BT-5s. We almost certainly want to deploy the JU-87A. And... Uh, I'm also very tempted by... Um, I think the 122 mil is um, a straight upgrade for the 10 mil, and I also managed to acquire myself some 15 inch, which is uh, uh, sorry, 15 centimeter, which uh, is also really good, and I can mechanize it. But if I'm going to introduce that, I need to actually shuffle out my my 10 and a half. Okay, so let's get to work. So let's start with tanks. So I still have some T26s left. Let's upgrade a 1A to a BT5. I'd obviously have to reduce the overstrength as well. So for one extra core slot, you get a quarter more. Uh, no, well, four, uh, a third more anti uh, anti infantry attack power, and uh, more than double anti tank power. But you do lose the rapid fire one point five. But nevertheless, this is a very solid machine. Its uh, slightly higher initiative is going to give it the edge over uh, a lot of units as well. Um, it still has tin foil armor, but it's a solid upgrade. Unlike the uh, the T26, which actually, I believe, has 12 ground defense. And that is actually pretty significant. 
but it's worth the upgrade. For sure. I don't have enough spares to deploy another one, but there's certainly no harm in me deploying one here. Okay, so if we look at artillery, we're doing our upgrades first. In fact, our next upgrade would be anti-tank, wouldn't it? Oh, I don't actually have enough. Okay, so forget that. Um, so if we look at artillery, and I'm not going to upgrade these because then I would lose them forever. Um, the uh, 122 mil gun is just a straight upgrade. Just a literal straight upgrade. It has uh, one less ammo and one less air defense, which is not that exciting. But does a bit more infantry damage and a bit more tank damage, which is really what's important. But we do have the issue that obviously, you know, they are in limited supply. And the AI does favor attacking them. And if I were to upgrade my um, 10 centimeters, they would be um, gone forever. A situation which we would want to avoid. So, what we will do is we will shuffle the artillery with the most experience into reserve. Meaning that if we bring it back into service later, it's, you know, got more EXP than just a unit that's fresh. And we will purchase... A122. And interestingly, what we can do is at a later point, we can upgrade from the 122 to the one, the 152 without risking one of our uh, precious... Um... Precious 10, 10 and a half centimeter guns, which I cannot, cannot replace. Get the wagon. Do you know, I would be very tempted actually to deploy a 15 centimeter. I mean, I know it's one extra core slot. But it truly does have superior stats. And the, more, the most important thing to me is that it has anti-tank in addition to anti-soft. Uh, oh well, for now I think we'll go with the 122, so let's just buy it. Oh, and the 15, of course, comes with uh, mechanization, which means moving it around is a lot easier, but we'll hold on to it for now. If I ever find myself drowning in 122, I could probably replace some of my 10.5s, but we'll see. Okay, so, um, next we received a very cool prototype, fight, uh, tactical. So, Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just better in every way. It's hugely better. It's actually got slightly shorter range, interestingly. But, uh, these stat changes are huge, especially versus tanks. I mean, that's a third more anti-tank. That's a pretty that's a pretty serious uh, upgrade in attack power. I mean, one extra strafe ability is you know it's whatever. Um, that ten strength against navy. I'm not sure if that's going to have any more application in this campaign, but that's that's a pretty serious upgrade as well. Um, but also, just its defensiveness is higher as well. So yeah, this is this is a pretty obvious upgrade that I should take and I will take. So the industry connections definitely paying off for us here. 
okay, and that's it. We're done. Uh, obviously, I could deploy more one one uh, uh, 122 mil artillery. I could rearrange my artillery and such, uh, but I'm not really in the mood to do that. I keep bringing this anti-tank gun along, hoping to get it, get some EXP on it, but it's kind of uh, hot garbage. And the more mobile anti-tank unit that I got as a prototype, uh, frankly, doesn't excite either. It's nice that it's mobile and everything, but it's not that great. This would be a solid upgrade. But still not great. Okay, so we have our cheap replacements guy. And I would normally be tempted to put that on a tank. Because tanks... So normally I'd put it on infantry, because infantry see a lot of action, they take a lot of casualties, and they're not cheap. So they satisfy all the criteria for cheap replacements to be a good hero. Um, but tanks are the next thing on that list. Since they too fight on the front line all the time, <clears throat> they take casualties, though not as much as infantry does. And they are relatively expensive, but not as expensive as infantry, but still potentially expensive. I do have more expensive units, of course, like artillery and anti-aircraft guns, but those units tend to not take nearly so much of a beating as uh, frontline units do. And the T-26, while a more expensive unit... Oh, it's not even a more expensive unit. That's funny. I would have presumed that it was. Oh, it is, yeah, by 20 prestige. It's a more expensive unit, but it is a much tougher unit. This, uh, the BT-5 has the same tinfoil armor as the Panzer. It's got better initiative, though. So it makes the ideal home for our cheap reinforcement hero. Give it an abbreviation, chip. I've almost spelt the word cheap there, I might as well actually just put cheap. So I know that I can just reinforce it easily, although I still have to keep an eye on my stocks of stolen tanks. Which uh, is not too bad, really. I do have a reasonable amount of stolen goods. I'm not sure what I would do with this thing. Ironically... <laughs> still still better against other tanks than the 1A. <laughs> the 1A's got 5 anti-tank and 1.5x attack, and this one's got 10 anti-tank. So funny. So funny to me that it would be so bad. Right, so that is our main force dealt with. Now, the real question is, do I want to keep all these strat bombers... They are a uh, slot inexpensive, though, requiring only one slot. So, you could be very tempted to just leave them as they are. Speaking of which, I do actually have a new flat gun available here. But it requires an extra core slot. No, it doesn't. Hang on a minute. No, it's just better. Except that it, it, it can move one less space when being moved around. Oh, it doesn't have rapid fire 1.5x anymore. And it doesn't have low altitude attack. So low altitude attack means that planes that go particularly low have low altitude attack. And anti-aircraft guns with low altitude attack can hit their close defense. Well, this guy does not have that. So 
it looks on paper statistically like it's better because it has twice the uh, twice the effectiveness but actually rapid fire 6 against close defense is going to do more damage than single fire 12 against um, ground defense so uh, it's a it's a trap as it were it's a trap okay so now all we have to think about is where we are going to deploy our stuff. I can see that the uh, you know once again farming the enemy is going to be quite difficult in these missions because allied infantry is going to just just attack without really any thought. Right, so let's go with the recon here. And here, no, here. Let's set up our artillery on the high ground here and here. We'll also add one artillery here. Okay, let's set up our anti-aircraft gun to defend our soft, precious artillery. Here and here. I don't presume that there are no enemies in this alcove. I seem to have the benefit of two airports, so... I guess one is better positioned to attack this way, but there's more airports here and here as well, so... Let's set up our Junker here, our other Tactical here. Let's then defend those Tacticals with Fighters. We'll then supply Strat Bombers, two for here and one for here, which is also defended by the same Fighter. I'm going to put my Scout Plane on this side because it seems like this side of the map is going to need scouting. And this fighter defends these three, and this fighter defends these three. So the other fighter can go anywhere. We'll stick it here. Now it's time to decide where my tanks are going to go. Now, what I can do is if I position my tanks here and here. Uh, I can use my recon car and the fact that I have perimeter control to squeeze out. Because this, this tile will be zone of control and so will this one. But if I move my recon car here, I can cancel the zone of control and get through. Let's set up the BT-5 here. Next, the old tinfoil 1A. I don't want to sit it next to this uh, anti-tank gun. Even though it's not a very good anti-tank gun. Do I want to bring a tank over here? This terrain looks quite rough. Let's add one here and... Sure, let's have one... Uh, let's have one tank over here. Oh, maybe not my best one though. Let's run this on the front line and let's run this one over here. I don't want to be in this position because I feel like that position is actually quite heavily zone of controlled and I would not find a way to squeeze out of there easily. And then finally my anti-tank gun, which I don't know, let's sit it here and we can crawl it up through the mountains. Hmm. Okay. 
do I want to deploy uh, any final auxiliary stuff? I've actually spent a fair bit of prestige here, although not... I have increased the amount of spares that I have lying around. Um, I was thinking, what what is cheap and tacky and would be useful for spares, for auxiliaries? Huh, this is an interesting piece of kit. I could buy some auxiliary fighters that cost next to nothing and just throw them away at the enemy. That's a, uh, that's a scout plane. ground attack, isn't it? I, I can't see anything here that would actually be useful. I'm just thinking, you know, when your fight their, their fighters are better than mine, it would be nice to have an auxiliary fighter who could lead every attack and therefore get chewed up. I think I will do that. So the idea is, if I encounter an enemy fighter, I'll throw the auxiliary fighter at it first, which is going to take the brunt of the pain, and then follow up with my fighters. And if it eventually dies, well, who cares? <laughs> right, I think we're done. I'm so happy to get some 15 centimeters. I will probably deploy them in future missions. But for now, I'm going to hold on to them. Because you do take about two or three artillery damage each round each match. It's hard to avoid it when all the aircraft go after it. Oh look, there's an enemy fighter, like, right there. My my friend the bait fighter is going to get some use pretty much immediately. Okay, well that's it for now. That's the deployment. Uh, for those of you who enjoy deployment, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time for the start of the actual fight. Um, I was going to say, and of course those who don't watch the deployment, I'll see you in the fight at the beginning of the next fight. Of course you can't hear this because you're not watching. Ha! Um, it's going to be cloudy. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't deploy so much air. Oh well. See you guys next time.